Hi everybody, my name is Ryan Higler and I'm a bass player based out of Quito, Ecuador. And this is the first of what I hope to be a whole series of videos about a bunch of different topics, mostly relating to the electric and upright basses, but uh, possibly about some more general music topics like improvisation and music theory. So today I'm gonna start with uh, something that's been very helpful to some of my students who are kind of at the beginner uh, intermediate area, uh, specifically relating to learning where all the notes are on the bass. So this can be very hard for a lot of reasons for a lot of students. They kind of, people tend to learn by numbers, by fret numbers, and by fingering patterns, especially in regards to like scales and arpeggios and things like that. So especially until we really get to uh, playing scales in at least two octaves, using the whole range of the instrument, it can be really, really challenging to uh, get out of these little fingering boxes that we learn when we first start playing. So those are really useful to kind of get us going and start visualizing things on the instrument, but all those little boxes can be really, really tough to break out of. So this exercise is designed to help you do that while at the same time working on the, you know, the names of the notes in different parts of the neck and also working on intervals. So I'm assuming that you, if you're watching this video, you already know kind of where some of the notes are on the bass, but maybe not all of them, or maybe it just takes you a little bit of time. You know, if somebody says play a B flat, you kind of have to think about it for a second and then, okay, that's a B flat. So if you're there, then this video is for you. Or maybe you might have some students that are struggling with this and this might help them out, okay? So uh, we also need to know what all the intervals are. So if you don't know what minor seconds and major seconds are and perfect fourths and perfect fifths and all this stuff, then I suggest that you do some Googling and, uh, or ask your teacher uh, for some help with that. So one of the cool things about the electric bass, whether you play four, five, or six string bass, is that the distance between each string in standard tuning anyway is the same, which means the instrument is symmetrical. So this is why all those fingering patterns that I talked about earlier work, because no matter where you are, you know, the same thing looks the same, or the pattern of intervals or frets or fingering is identical, okay? So this is also really, really dangerous because it lets us get kind of trapped in those boxes. But we can also use it to our advantage, and that's what I'm gonna deal with today. So first of all, we need to talk about the distance between the strings. The distance between each string is a perfect fourth. Now a perfect fourth has, as it would happen, five half steps. So five is kind of our magic number here. And note that, of course, a half step and a fret are exactly the same thing. Um, so just like when you first get your bass and somebody teaches you how to tune it, you know, you play like the fifth fret note on the D string and that's the same as the open G and that's how you tune your bass, okay? So that means that those two notes are the same. But we can use that same logic to, to find the same note on different strings using that magic number five. So there's a little bit of math here, but it's not too complicated. So it's not that big of a deal. So zero plus five is five. And so those two notes are the same. Then if we move up one fret, we go to the A flat on the G string, first fret. That note is at the sixth fret of the D string. One plus five is six. Then A, two, and seven. B flat, three, and eight. Four, nine, five, 10, six, 11, seven, 12, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So practicing this is actually pretty useful because you start to kind of make these connections between the strings and you're not just used to going for you know, one note. Like if you think of an A, you don't always go to that A or that A or that A. That you kind of think of all of them at once and then you make your decision based on which one you want to play. Um, now this works across multiple strings because again, the interval is the same. So we can go zero, five, 10, 15, that's all the same note, that's all a G. Sorry, my bass is kind of, uh, the intonation is a little off. And then first fret, that A flat, one, six, 11, and 16, etc. And then you can keep going. And this is actually a really cool thing to practice to relate those things together. Okay. So we can apply the same logic to different intervals. So I'm gonna use 
kind of G here as my root note, as my starting note. So if we start out with a half step or a minor second, which would be G to A flat. So that's the obvious way to play that interval. But that interval, if we go here, we're on the same string and we're going plus one. So here's the math for you. Plus one, but if we say plus one and we subtract five, that's minus four. So we go up one string, five to one. So plus one on the same string, minus four on the next string. And that's the same note. So that's what a minor second looks like when you cross strings. Okay? If that math sounded complicated to you, it'll make more sense in a second after we go through a few more of these. So then we go to a whole step or a major second. So this would be G natural to A natural. On the same string, it looks like that, plus two frets. So plus two on the same string, subtract five, we get what? Minus three. So plus two, minus three. And so that's two different ways to play a major second or a whole step. Then we go three half steps, which is a minor third. Plus three on the same string, minus two on the next string. So that's G to B flat. Major third, four half steps. That's kind of already out of our position, right? We have to do a little bit of a shift to get there, but it still works. So plus four on the same string, we subtract five, minus one. There's our B. So G to B, G to B. Cool. Now we go to our perfect fourth. Perfect fourth, like we discussed earlier, has five half steps. Five to ten, fifth fret to tenth fret in this case. But plus five minus five is zero. So a perfect fourth is, of course, on the same fret. This is G to C. And we just keep going. There's a tritone. This is plus six, six half steps. Now this is kind of an illogical way to play a tritone. The logical way is this one. There we go. So plus one fret and plus one string. Right? We go to a perfect fifth. Perfect fifth has seven half steps. Plus seven. Seven minus five is two. So plus one string, up one string, up two frets. There's our perfect fifth. Okay, now we can start playing these intervals across two strings. So I'm going to move to this G, which is at the tenth fret of the A string. So there's my perfect fifth up to a D. But again, if it's plus one string, plus two frets, I can subtract five again, and I get minus three, but up two strings. That was a lot of math. I'm going to repeat that. So I'm going up one string, plus two frets. But if I subtract five, which gives me minus three, I can go up two strings, which is right here. So I have a perfect fifth here, which I can finger one three or two four, or I can play it four one. So I could play my major scale, for instance, like this, instead of this way. It's pretty useful because sometimes you find yourself on the wrong finger, especially if you're playing improvised music. You make a mistake and you really want to be on second finger to play that line, but you're on four. But if you study intervals this way, then it's fine. It doesn't matter. You can just do it that way, or you can do it this way. It makes no difference where you land. Okay? Keep going. Now we're on to sixths. So the first one is a minor sixth. Minor sixth actually has eight half steps in it. So it's actually uh, four whole steps. So if it's eight frets on the same string, eight minus five plus three. There it is. The tenth fret to thirteenth fret. Now same thing. I can subtract five to this one again to my plus three and I get minus two. So there's also a minor sixth across two strings. 
we're on to major sixth. Major sixth, nine and a half steps. Now the numbers are getting kind of crazy. So go slow if you need to. So nine minus five plus four. 10th fret to 14th fret. Or plus four minus five again is minus one. It's 10th fret to 9th fret across two strings. We keep going. Minor 7th is 10 half steps. Now, 10 is 5 plus 5, which means it's really just on the same fret. There's our minor 7th, okay? It can also be here. That's not particularly practical. So, that's your best fingering for a minor 7th. Then a major 7th is 11. So 11 minus 5 plus 6. But more useful is plus 1. And up two strings. And then finally, we get to our octave. There are 12 half steps, of course, in an octave. 12 minus 5. Minus 5 again. It's just plus 2. So 12 minus 5 minus 5. Plus two, plus two string. Most of us already know that, but we can come to that using the same logic as all the other intervals. Okay? Now you can also play an octave, for instance, like this. Because this would be, again, my intonation's off. Sorry about that. So there's our normal octave, which is plus two strings, plus two frets. But if I subtract five from that plus two, I get minus three. So eighth fret to fifth fret, and there's an octave. So, playing with different notes, playing through all your intervals with all these different fingerings, kind of repeating them um, in the way that I was kind of doing, you know. Using logical fingerings is really, really helpful for kind of getting oriented and breaking out of these silly little fingering boxes that we learn when we're just starting out, okay? So hopefully this is helpful to you. If you have any questions or any feedback, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And uh, I look forward to doing another video soon.